नमस्ते एवरी वन टूडे वी विल सी रोबोटिक नेक डिसेक्शन विद रिट्रो ऑरिकुलर अप्रोच आई एम डॉक्टर नितिन शर्मा आई एम वर्किंग विद आस्था एच सी जी कैंसर सेंटर अहमदाबाद दिस इज आर हेड एंड नेक टीम एंड दिस इज आर रिकंस्ट्रक्शन टीम so this patient is having disease at right lower alveolus so we have planned right side robotic neck dissection wide excision segmental mandibulectomy with free fibula flap the neck dissection will be supra omohyoid neck dissection let's mark the incision first we will place our incision in retro auricular area it has got one big limb and a small limb right patient is in supine position with chin rotated to the opposite side just after incision the first structure you encounter will be sternocleidomastoid muscle so here you can see sternocleidomastoid muscle greater auricular nerve and external jugular vein the next thing you need to identify is platysma obviously we all can identify platysma and in the same fashion we need to raise this flap till we reach midline once you raise the flap the next step would be fixation of chunks retractor so this is how we fix the chunks retractor chunks retractor has got many blades out of which my personal favorite is long one because of its reach so these are the blades and we fix the blade like this and then we finally adjust the traction this is how it looks after you place the retractor next shot will be from robotic camera friends i want you to note certain things in this video watch for the camera position camera tilt zoom in zoom out position and placement of retractors how we use suction how i give traction with fenestrated bipolar forceps how i dissect with maryland bipolar forceps and movement of robotic arms whether i am pushing i am pulling basic philosophy of neck dissection is same whether we do open neck dissection or robotic neck dissection I want you to pick all these fine points before leaving this window. So first look at this and get yourself oriented. The circle is the area where I have accidentally cut the platysma. So let's begin with level one a. Level one a is the area situated between two bellies of digastric. So this is level one a area, but right now I am exposing little bit more. So this is what I do. First, I raise subplatysmal flap under headlight. Then I put the retractor in. Then I do little bit more raising under robotic camera to get better exposure. Can you appreciate more platysmal fibers? Can you appreciate the quality of vision with robotic camera? So isn't it absolutely fantastic to raise the flap under robotic camera? Now, 
I am moving upwards. The idea is to locate the mandible. But mind it, we don't have tactile sensation in robotic arms. So for this purpose, I am totally relying upon my assistant who will help me in locating the mandible. I will show how. I already told you about the position of patient. But one thing I left, which is neck extension. As in open surgery, here also we give neck extension. Few things about retroauricular approach. This is gasless procedure. We use two instruments or two robotic arms plus camera. I prefer bipolar in both hands. One is Maryland bipolar and other is fenestrated bipolar. So this sharp one from which I am dissecting right now is Maryland bipolar. Now I think I have reached up to the mandible, which is the superior most point. And I asked my assistant to help me locating the mandible. So follow the suction. So he told me this is the mandible. With the help of suction, he told me this is the mandible. And this is level 1A, the tissue of level 1A. So to get better vision, I zoom in my camera like this. This is level 1A. Hold level 1A with fenestrated bipolar and I started my dissection. Few do's and don't about 1A. Don't leave any tissue behind at apex of 1A. This is most vulnerable area. Second thing, in most of the cases, you will get a vessel at apex of level 1A. Buzz it and then proceed if you want your field to be clean. Third thing, don't forget to tie or clip anterior jugular vein. At times, it may cause bleeding and this can be the reason of re-exploration. So, don't forget about anterior jugular vein. We are going towards the apex. You can appreciate the fibers of platysma. You can appreciate the tissue. We are removing level 1A. Now you can see the vessel. I just bipolarized it. So friends, this is the vessel I was talking about. As you go down, you will find many small tiny vessels running vertically. Bipolarize each of them. You will get best field. Can you see the vessel just above my suction? One more. You must have one question in your mind. What is the need of this procedure? Why we do robotic neck dissection? What are the advantages of this procedure? Hidden scar is one definite advantage. Other two advantages which are not yet studied but I have experienced are one, preservation of sensation over neck area. Two, less shoulder syndrome. This may or may not be due to better preservation of cervical roots or less stretching. So it is now up to you 
how much importance you give to this car or your patient whom this car is of importance or not if your patient is 65 year old male then definitely you will not bother about this car now think about operating a 33 year old marketing executive or 35 year old female who is teacher by profession don't you think this car is important for them they will be grateful to you for rest of their life if you gave them a scar which they could hide let's get back to our video again we are continuing our downward journey Remember I told you apex is the one such area where we tend to leave the tissue behind Can you see the apex there is a small bit of tissue So I saw that tissue and tried to take it out But my assistant told me this is the apex and this is the mandible so actually there is no tissue left Whatever left is above mandible so i came back again this retroauricular approach of robotic neck dissection was developed in 2012 by lee and his colleagues from south korea it is also called modified face lift approach why i have chosen retroauricular approach in this case we have other approaches as well but why retroauricular approach the simple reason for that is we are going to do free fibula in this case actually this is the case of squamous cell carcinoma right lower alveolus and we are going to do segmental mandibulectomy so anterior cut we are going to take intraorally and posterior cut we are going to take from this incision another thing our microvascular surgeon will do microvascular anastomosis from the same incision and our maxillofacial team will fix the fibula anteriorly from intraorally and posteriorly from this incision so the patient is having a single scar which he could hide if we have chosen bilateral axillary breast or transaxillary approach we are bound to put an additional scar for microvascular anastomosis at the neck so to avoid that additional scar we chose retroauricular approach we will give only one scar which patient can hide duration is one disadvantage of robotic neck dissection i finish in one hour while doing open neck dissection but for this surgery my console time was one hour and 55 minutes at 30 35 minutes for flap raising and retractor fixation so total 2 hours 30 minutes or 2 hours 35 minutes is actual time
can you see we have a node here must be a reactive one but there is a node Our level one is almost done now. and here we go so this is level 1a again a relook of level 1a this is ipsilateral digastric this is contralateral this is for your orientation Let's move to level 1 we now first challenge is to identify marginal mandibular nerve in this case we are going to preserve angle mouth and orbicular soris muscle so preservation of marginal mandibular nerve is very much important three important things about marginal mandibular nerve first if you raise your subclavicular flap correctly it will be definitely one or two layers below the fibro fatty tissue above the mandible not on the superficial layer right now my assistant is telling me this is the lower border of mandible second thing it rarely goes below the angle of mandible and the third one hayes martin's maneuver of preservation of marginal mandibular nerve is not advisable here as we are dealing with malignancy and we don't want to leave any tissue behind at one b area we will be looking for the marginal mandibular nerve just above the lower end of the mandible below one or two layers so first i will locate the mandible again and of course my assistant will help me because i don't have tactile sensation his suction is pointing towards the mandible so this is lower end of the mandible angle of mandible i hold the tissue with fenestrated bipolar and start dissecting gentle layer by layer dissection
देयर इट इज कैन यू सी मार्जिनल मैंडिबुलर नर्व जस्ट अब अवर वेसल आई विल डिसेक्ट इट एंटीरियरली very careful dissection in this area because marginal is very sensitive nerve so now we are going to lift the marginal mandibular nerve up in paramandibular region and we are going to find facial artery so this is definitely facial artery i am holding with my fenestrated bipolar yes it is can you see facial artery so we are going to clip facial artery and this vein right now so now you can appreciate the vessels clearly vein artery and nerve nerve crossing the vessels put your clips very carefully because marginal mandibular nerve is very close here
After clipping both the vessels, we will go along lower border of mandible. From posterior to anterior direction till we reach digastric muscle. Once we reach anterior end of digastric muscle, we will come backward, taking entire tissue from digastric muscle and mylohyoid muscle. Get yourself oriented once again. We have anterior end of digastric muscle at the top, then mylohyoid muscle and lower end of the mandible. If you see carefully, you can see the fibers of mylohyoid muscle below. Here you will get so many tiny low flow vessels. You need to buzz each of them. Take entire tissue from mylohyoid and digastric muscle. There is no important structure lying here. You can go safely like this till you reach lower end of the muscle. So now we have reached up to the lower end of the muscle.
now you can appreciate the digestive muscle and mylohyoid muscle beautifully Once we done with the mylohyoid muscle, we will change our direction and go around laterally to look for common facial vein. Hemostasis is equally important, and mostly you will get the ooze from specimen side. So we go layer by layer. From above downwards and we got the vein. Can you see the vein? Yes, here it is. So once I saw the vein, I again changed my direction. one more vessel
so we get the facial artery just look at my section just below my section we will get the facial artery here it is so we got common facial vein we got facial artery and now digastric tendon is also visible so after looking for the facial artery common facial vein we came back again along the border of mylohyoid muscle now we will look for hypoglossal nerve duct and lingual nerve what we do in open surgery just clean the lower border of mylohyoid muscle poke the finger in and then put the retractor and you can see everything hypoglossal nerve duct lingual nerve but here we cannot do this so here we need to pull the tissue from mylohyoid muscle very gently everything under vision because hypoglossal nerve is there and you cannot afford injury to hypoglossal nerve I have already told you that I like bipolar in both arms. So this is the reason why. Here is the reason. gently i am trying to look under the mylohyoid muscle
can you see the duct this is the duct what we call is water duct for parotid it is tensus duct for submandibular duct it is water duct and here it is hypoglossal nerve so we got them all so this is hypoglossal now and we have sufficient stump of facial artery as well for microvascular anastomosis we can dissect facial artery more in order to provide sufficient stump for microvascular anastomosis to microvascular surgeon but at our center in robotic cases my microvascular surgeon prefers superior thyroid artery over facial artery so i am not dissecting it more but it can be dissected always put two clips at patient side for any artery while clipping this is very much important while i am holding this specimen in artery my assistant is cutting with scissors don't confuse this with third robotic arm this is scissors and this cutting is done by my assistant believe me this is not that easy but he is trained enough after facial artery we have only one attachment left that is common facial vein so now we are dissecting common facial vein see the maneuverability see the freedom of movements with robotica i can rotate i can move my arms just like my fingers can go around so this is really a wonderful instrument to work with since this is the big vein i am again putting two clips at patient side and one at specimen side
and we are done with one bee. Now let's revise structures from top to bottom, lower end of mandible, anterior belly of digastric, mylohyoid muscle, lingual nerve, hypoglossal nerve and posterior belly of digastric. After 1A, 1B resection, now we are ready for level 2A resection. Right now, I am separating tail parotid from our specimen. So, left side is tail parotid. For better orientation, see this picture. From top to bottom, we have digastric. Then left side, we have parotid tail. And what I am dissecting now is green arrow that is tissue over sternocleidomastoid muscle. I have already told you that in this case we are using two arms and a camera. Two arms are Maryland bipolar and fenestrated bipolar. The camera is 30 degree. Don't confuse this with 0 degree, this view is from 30 degree camera and I always prefer 30 degree. And my assistant is holding this suction. So the idea is to take the tissue up from sternocleidomastoid muscle as we do in open surgery. My usual practice is to start raising anterior to external jugular vein. But today I don't find any external jugular vein till now. So here we got the vein. So this vein is quite anterior. Can you see very small tributary? First we will bipolarize this and then we will go. So I got this bipolarized once again little more and then cut. Guys we have three approaches to do level 2 and 3. One lateral to medial in which we start from sternocleidomastoid muscle and take our specimen out at superior thyroid artery. So this is lateral to medial. The other one is medial to lateral where we start medial from superior thyroid artery and ends up at sternocleidomastoid muscle. And the third one is mixed approach. And I use mixed approach. I start from lateral end, stop in between and then come back from medial to lateral. Same mix approach you will see today. After lateral dissection, now I came medially. 
so you can see the fibers of omohyoid muscle i am taking tissue from omohyoid muscle now you have a better picture you can see in this figure the black arrow is omohyoid muscle This is again an example why I love bipolar cautery in my both hands. Look how easy it is. If you have bipolar in both right and left hands. If you see this vein carefully it is crossing the digastric muscle if i clip this vessel i will directly land upon internal jugular vein and the hypoglossal nerve but today we are going to preserve this there might be a node here maybe reactive dissecting the vein little more and we have enough of lateral dissection let's go again medially till now we were pushing our specimen down now i have taken my entire specimen up can you see yes i am pulling the specimen up and start dissecting along sternocleidomastoid muscle again till now we were not retracting sternocleidomastoid muscle but now my assistant has taken up the retractor and start retracting sternocleidomastoid muscle now igv is visible and this is the retractor during entire level 2 and 3 dissection we will keep changing the position of this retractor and i want you to notice that change you can see few nodes igv is better visualized now and we have lifted entire tissue of level 2a and 3 medially
now i am moving up and soon we will get spinal accessory nerve you can see my camera is not clean but i am okay with it because i am not working over that spot my working field is clear now i am looking for a spinal accessory nerve so we got the nerve just below my suction you can see spinal accessory nerve you can see it better i'm taking the tissue anterior to spinal accessory nerve that will be level 2a just above the spinal accessory nerve we have internal jugular vein crossing digastric muscle and down there will be hypoglossal nerve and carotid artery but we will try to preserve it as i have told you before also just watch my movements carefully so i am creating the plane buzzing the tissue and pushing this tissue towards my specimen so this is the correct way of dissection if i pull the tissue down then i may break my specimen so mind it always push the tissue
can you see a node just sitting over internal jugular vein so at my center we call it purvis node so dr purvi is my colleague and she is excellent person excellent surgeon and extremely brave lady and while teaching me the neck dissection she used to say there is a node you will always find at level 3 just sitting over internal jugular vein so we used to call it purvis node Don't you think we need saline wash right now? Here we go and we have saline wash. Now see the magic. Good saline washes placement of correct retractors at correct places good hemostasis are few small small things which create very big difference in your surgery all these nodes are reactive nodes because when i am giving this voice over i have already final histopath report in my hand
in this case we started with lateral to medial then came back medial to lateral and finally we took entire tissue lateral to medial I am working on internal jugular vein right now. Can you see how we can dissect with Maryland forcer? You can open up the plane and then easily cut. I'm sure now you're clear that the basic philosophy of neck dissection is same whether you do it open or you do it with robotic system. In robotic surgery we have just changed the incision, we have just changed the instruments and we have just modified our approach little bit. But basic philosophy is same. So we have cleared internal jugular vein right now and I like to clean it 360 degrees all around.
we keep on dissecting medially and now you can see carotid artery and ensa still we have not seen vagus and hypoglossal nerve so we are going down along ensa cervicalis sorry ensa hypoglossi you can see pulsating carotid Now you can see common carotid is dividing into internal and external carotid. Finally I cleaned my camera sorry my assistant cleaned my camera now we have got better vision and the wash see the magic now i am sure you are clear that that is the vagus section is just above carotid beautiful pulsations of carotid artery
dissecting lower down lower carotid artery
can you see superior thyroid artery yes so this is superior thyroid artery just arising from carotid external carotid artery and this is the artery from which we have anastomosed our flap just little more dissection is needed to get our final specimen oh 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 we got vein very small vein not one vein two veins so i'm going to clip Can you see how fine a dissection can be with Maryland bipolar? Final clipping. and we are done still we have not seen hypoglossal nerve now we will go for level 2b for this we changed our retractor took my camera back So this suction is pointing towards the gastric muscle. This is spinal accessory now. This one. More camera back. level 2 b dissection is little difficult but you can do it you need little more camera adjustments little more retractor adjustment but it can be done so as you can see i have zoomed my camera out taken my camera back and now i can see level 2 b very clear and i start dissecting
Level 2B dissection is exactly same as we do in open surgery. We will go along digastric muscle. We will reach sternodigastric junction. This is for your orientation. From top to bottom, spinal accessory, digastric and sternocleidomastoid muscle. So now we are moving along sternocleidomastoid muscle. Correct placement of retractor is single most important thing while doing level 2B. And second important thing is constant suction. Look how helpful suction is. If you carefully see, we have little more tissue anterior to spinal accessory now. So what we will do? We will swing the tissue anterior to spinal accessory nerve and take entire specimen anterior to spinal accessory nerve so I just gently lift up the spinal accessory nerve Little bit more from internal jugular vein.
see how i am reflecting the nerve now i took entire tissue under spine and accessory nerve and pull it anteriorly see now we have entire tissue in front of spinal accessory now and we take it on so this is our 2b so we need wash again you can see 2a 2b spinal accessory nerve internal jugular vein as i told you we have not seen hypoglossal nerve let's go for it so i have adjusted my camera so this is external carotid we are looking for hypoglossal nerve just above external carotid and here it is so this is hypoglossal nerve few finishing maneuvers dissecting superior thyroid for my microvascular surgeon now you can appreciate common carotid external carotid internal carotid superior thyroid
finally i cleaned my maryland bipolar so let's see vegas This is how it looks when you remove the retractor. And that is why retractor is very much important. So this is final look. This is level three. This is omohyoid muscle. not satisfied with this clip look this clip is not correctly placed so we placed one more clip one more here also this is how we check for bleeding so no oozing no bleeding field is absolutely clean and clear so we check for bleeding this is level 1b area this is anterior valley of digastric muscle this is 1a no bleeding you can see the platysma you can see the valleys of digastric ipsilateral and contralateral now we are at level 1b this is mylohyoid muscle coming back this is facial artery and this is hypoglossal nerve
this is hypoglossal emerging from digastric these are the carotids this is facial right this is hypoglossal this is external carotid internal carotid this is internal jugular vein no bleeding as such and this is vagus can you see the vagus ansa internal jugular vein you can see the cervical roots spinal accessory nerve level 2a level 2b and 3 absolutely clean So guys this is robotic supra omohyoid neck dissection with retroauricular approach you can see the clearance you can see the structures one more thing i did in this particular case that is cutting of mylohyoid muscle which is actually part of primary resection so i adjusted my camera hold the muscle and start cutting you can see hypoglossal nerve below after this neck dissection we did primary resection in primary resection we did segmental mandibulectomy anterior cut for segmental mandibulectomy was placed intraorally while posterior cut be placed from this incision only anterior fibula fixation was done intraorally while posterior was done through this incision only microvascular anastomosis was done with superior thyroid artery and internal jugular vein with this incision only Unfortunately we don't have pictures or video clippings for fibula fixation but we do have a small video of microvascular anastomosis that I will show you So in the end patient had only one scar that is retroauricular scar which is very well hidden under the collar of his shirt this is microvascular anastomosis done from same incision 
you can see anastomosis was done with superior thyroid artery and internal jugular vein and this is the final picture you can appreciate this scar this is frontal profile so guys this was the surgery and these are the results thank you so much for watching this video i hope you have enjoyed this video with this i am dr nitin sharma signing off thank you so much once again